So, my next job on uh, the Revox is uh, to solder to solder two leads there on the I seam on the 555 I seam uh, which uh, will come out here there is another lead here which will be connected to ground okay these two leads uh, will um, will be used uh, later uh, to make uh, the very speed uh, option of uh, this uh, machine uh, this work is based on a youtube channel i don't remember the name but i will uh, put a link uh, later while uh, producing the video there is a guy who made uh, two videos for making uh, this machine uh, with a very speed option and I am convinced to make this modification on my machine too that's why I soldered these two leads there on, uh, on the outer pins of the 555 ok now my next job will be to replace these three Rifa cups one Two, three. I will replace. I will replace uh, these caps uh, right away, and uh, I, I should do this as soon as possible because everybody says uh, this is these caps are a time bomb. They can go off any time, and it is uh, there is a danger of making uh, other damages to the machine if I leave them there. So this job, uh, I, I will do this job right now. Of course, like I always do, I first take a picture of all the cables connected so that I take them out now to make my job easier. Hmm, strange connector here, it seems to be broken. That connector here seems to be broken. This is easily fixed up. Okay. I have the new capacitors here, so now I am um, okay to take out all these connectors to make room for me to be able to take out those Rifa cuts. Two out. Three out. I will go and pick something to be able to clean my solder. I think now it's easier to turn the machine like that on the side.
Okay. These capacitors are replaced. I will cut out the extra leads here. And that's it. I see a little black mark here, which is a sign that this resistor once failed. And if this happened, it means that this machine might have had a problem in the past. And uh, that resistor here is replaced. But anyway, let me put back all the cables there. Okay. First is grey. Attached. Second is white. Okay. Third is red. Okay. And let me see the others. Okay. The outer here is green. Ah, oh, I have two greens. Huh. I should have paid attention on that because I have two greens and uh, this could be a problem if I put the wrong green in the wrong place. And anyway, I hope they are okay. Uh, Blue and red. Okay, so this board is finished. There is another Rifa cap back there. And uh, this Rifa cap normally is not stressed that much, but uh, and it's a little bit uh, tricky to replace because it's sort of in there, but I will try to replace this too. First I will take a picture of the cables. And I have two yellows and two greens, and this might be a problem. But I think I will take only the four first out. So I don't have to pay attention to the couples, the same color couples. There it is. Okay. I have to somehow keep those cables to the side, but I, I have a way of doing this, and the way is to put something there, just like that, to keep this to the side somehow, Let's see, that's it. I will take a picture of that to, to show it on the video later, okay, now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take that Riva cup out too.
Okay. I will press it a little bit more inside so that it doesn't make any contact to the motor. That's it. Let's apply some solder, and we are finished. Okay, so that was the job of uh, replacing all the rifa caps replacing all the rifa caps on this machine which is a very necessary job do not do not power on a Revox A77 without the rifa caps replaced okay it's a uh, 20 minute job, even less, and it will it will save you maybe from a disaster. So one, two, three, green, four. That's it. I uh, will just power on the machine once to, to be sure that everything is working properly. Let's see. Okay, looks like everything is working properly indeed, so job done, we are moving to the next job. My next job on uh, this machine will be to get rid of this uh, dummy remote uh, connector, I will take this out. I will take this plug out because I want to use the socket for uh, for various speed remote control. I will take out all these cables here. They come. See, I will take out all these cables here that go to the connectors in there. Okay. And uh, you can see all the connectors in there. Okay, and I will just have to bridge connector one and two. Uh, there is detailed explanation on the schema on, on the service manual of the machine which are the connections one and two. I will uh, put a, I will put a picture from the service manual to show, and I will just use. To, uh, these two plugs, I will I will solder them together to make a jumper wire. I will jumper connection one and two in there, and the machine will work perfectly without this. And I will get rid of all the cables that are here that go and connect to this plug. Uh, if uh, somebody 
in the future wants to put to, to put a remote control an original remote control here I will keep the wires and I will uh, have them somewhere in and I can make uh, all these connections again but I don't think that anybody will ever do this because uh, the original remote control is very expensive it's ridiculously expensive and it's better to just uh, make your own which is not very difficult, there is a, a semantic how to do this, but I don't care doing it right now, I just want to make a very speed option and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, let's take out that plug. That's it.
this is out and this goes in Okay, this is all out. The new jumper wire is in there. So I think let me take the camera and try to show what I did. Can you see it there? Yeah, I think you can see it. Okay. This is everything I did now. Okay. Let me put some reels on the machine and confirm that it's working properly. Yep, the machine is working. Okay, so everything is working as it should. The dummy plug is removed, the socket can be used for something else. And I'm moving on to other modifications or uh, repairs. So we have another job uh, to do. There is a counter belt that has uh, snapped here. So uh, I have a bunch of uh, belts and I will uh, try to replace this. As I can see, this belt goes from uh, the ins, from the back in here. So we have to take that thing out in order to replace that belt. And that's what I'm going to do now. We have to 
take out that brick here. Is. And there it is. Uh, 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 okay. Looks like it's working. That's all. We will put that plate back. Okay, let's test it. And counter is working. That's nice. Job done. Moving to the next job. So, my next job is to try and fit a standard power socket here because this is an old uh, type of uh, socket and you don't find these nowadays. But I have a replacement one. It is that here which is a standard power socket and it seems that everything the, the screws the perimeter of uh, the inlet here it seems that everything fits perfectly so what I will try to do is remove all this thing here and put this in, in, instead of uh, that here I might have to to, to remove this, this thing here, which is the, the protection, the power protection, let me show you, ah, yeah. I used to put that here to make it, to make the machine work while the wooden case is not in place. But uh, this is some sort of protection, so when you, you don't, when you take out the wooden case, the machine stops working. But uh, uh, there is a cable here that goes out and goes down there to the power um, switch. Uh, I think I will remove all this and I will make that cable go directly to the socket so that I don't have to, I don't need any protection, so I will not have that protection here. Okay, let's see if that is possible.
As we can see, it fits perfectly in there. I didn't even expect that, but that's it. Um, 
Uh, when you get rid of all these mechanisms, I don't need it at all. I will just connect everything directly to that thing here. Okay. I think this is the best thing to do. Uh, I will not need else, so I will just cut out the F cable um, and I will just keep uh, these two cables here and I will just cut out these cables here and this is out. Now I just want to see if I will put it like that. All like that. I will. Uh, I will search for an angled cable to see which way it goes. I did it. This is the new socket. It fits perfectly in here. It fits perfectly. I, did, I didn't expect this. Here I made the connection with the cables. I removed everything that is here, that uh, protection stuff, nothing is there now. And everything is working normally. So now our Revox can work with uh, standard power cable. That is very nice. Okay, keeping on. Working on the machine, I noticed something else. Uh, this is the this this is the potentiometer for one uh, channel recording level, and this is the other channel recording recording level. So that one was a little bit loose, and uh, trying to figure out why, I saw that uh, this metal plate on the back was not clipping here and there. You see, there are two clips, there are two places here and there where this back metal plate clips, but I don't know how, I don't see how it clips anyway. So this was not clipping and this whole metal was uh, bent and loose. I had uh, some uh, sear clips here. This is one and this is the second. And this is uh, a solution I, m I managed to find. I had to improvise a bit. And it seems to keep it correctly in place. What I had, let me see where it is. I, I had here a set of sear clips of many sizes. This is very helpful. I happened to have it, so I used two of them and uh, made this uh, working uh, correctly. I had to uh, unsolder the three cables here. It's an orange and a red and a black one. I had to take out uh, this uh, output uh, I, I think this is the, the, the input uh, preamplifier and I had to take out to make room to unsolder these three wires. I did this, I took this out, you can just pull it out like that and then you can work on it. That's how I did it and uh, this is the result. I hope it lasts.